guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Welcome to another causal inference struggle. We know from experience that it's pretty easy to run an OLS regression, but what does it mean to assume that that coefficient of our OLS is causal in nature? Well, the assumption we need for that is called selection on observables, and that's what I'm talking about today. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get started with the motivating example. The motivating example is once again going to be the effect of having a cat on your stress level. So here I've got two people, Bill and Barb. Bill has a cat, Bill's stress level is six. Barb does not have a cat and her stress level is eight. So what if Bill and Barb were exactly the same except for the fact that Bill had a cat and Barb did not? Well, then we would say the treatment effect of having a cat is probably minus two when we measure our stress level from zero to 10. Why do we say that the treatment effect here is minus two? Well, if Bill and Barb are identical, except for the fact that Bill has a cat and Barb does not, then Barb's stress level of an eight is a really good proxy for Bill's Y zero or Bill's outcome if he does not have a cat. And Bill's stress level of six is a good proxy for Barb's Y one, her outcome if she did have a cat. And we know to find a treatment effect, we take your Y one and we subtract your Y zero for each person. So Bill's Y1 would be six, his Y0, his proxy for his Y0 is Barb's outcome, which is eight. So we would say that treatment effect is minus two. And our best guess for Barb's Y1 is Bill's Y1, which is six. We would say that six minus eight for Barb as well. And so Barb's treatment effect would be minus two. Now it could be the case that Bill and Barb are not identical. There might be some other factors about Bill and Barb that affect their stress level. Those same factors might also affect whether or not Bill and Barb get a cat or not. So just like we said in some previous videos, maybe Bill has a much less stressful job in general than Barb. That probably makes Bill more likely to get a cat. It also makes Bill less likely to have high stress levels. And alternatively for Barb, if she's got a more stressful job, she's probably less likely to get a cat and she's probably more likely to have a higher stress level. So if we could control for the stress level of Bill and Barb's job and they're identical except for that characteristic, that would be selection on observables with controls and we would still get this estimate of minus two because we could control for the stress level of their job. We could control for everything that makes Bill and Barb different. After we control for all of those things, assuming we can observe all of those things, all of those factors that affect your treatment and your outcome together, then your treatment effect will be minus two, assuming we put those controls into our OLS regression. Let's go back to some arrow diagrams. So we said earlier there are three ways that two variables can be correlated. Could be that y causes x, could be that x causes y, or it could be that there's some w that causes both x and y. If we just have that x causes y, that was our first example where Bill and Barb were exactly the same, and so we would have selection on observables without controls. If we have some w that affects x and y, so maybe again, this is the stress level of the job that Bill and Barb have, then that W is affecting both whether or not Bill and Barb get a cat and both Bill and Barb's stress level. So if we could control for that, and that was the only confounder to the relationship between X and Y, then we could just throw that into a regression. Bill and Barb would be identical except for the stress level of each of their jobs, but we've controlled for it. So now we have selection on observables with controls. To make that a little more mathy and to put in some potential outcome notation, the selection on observables assumption goes like this. It says that your outcomes are independent of your treatment. So it says that for Bill and Barb, their stress level if they had a cat and their stress level if they did not have a cat is not related to whether or not they actually have a cat. So potential outcome notation, we would say that their Y1 and their Y0, their potential outcome if they're treated, their potential outcome if they're not treated is independent of their treatment status. And it makes sense that if we need to throw controls, it's gonna be a very similar assumption just with controls or conditional on controls. So in green here, we have that same assumption, that selection on observables assumption with controls. So it says that your potential outcomes are independent of X given or conditional on the value of your confounder, the value of your controls, the value of what we'll call W is equal to some value little W. And again, that's just coming back to this picture here. I've alluded to this a little bit, but let's think a little more critically about exactly what controls we need to put in, what we don't. So here I put in X and Y and W, which we know we need to control for, and I put in some other controls. So notice that variable A, whatever A is, that only affects whether or not you get treated, it doesn't affect your stress level. Well, this is not a confounder because it does not affect both X and Y. So because it does not affect both X and Y, we do not need to control for that in our selection on observables regression, in our LOS regression. Similarly for B, B only affects our outcome, it does not affect treatment. So we do not need to control for it in the regression. Why don't we need to control for A and B? because A and B are not affecting this relationship here because they don't affect both treatment and outcome. They either affect either only treatment or only outcome. C, C is an especially bad control because X causes Y through C. So if we were to control for C, 
we would be misspecifying the relationship between x and y, and we do not want to get a bad estimate for the effect of x and y, but if I control for c, that's gonna happen. So generally, as a rule of thumb, we don't wanna control for anything downstream of x. We don't wanna control for anything that x causes. We definitely don't want to control for something where x causes y through that other variable. We only wanna control for w, which confounds this relationship. I'll do a numerical example in a follow-up video but hopefully this gives you a bit more intuition for how we run a selection on observables, how we run an OLS regression and call it causality. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.